Hello everyone, welcome to this Cherry Heart tutorial. I'm Sandra and I'm here today to continue my hexagon flower blanket tutorials with you. So I have finished my blanket, or at least I finished the crochet part of it. Um, and as you can see, I have squared off all my edges. So I've got nice straight edges down here. And I've done that by making these half hexagon flowers and filling in the gaps with half hexagons and I've also squared off these ends by filling in the little V's between the hexagons. So I'm going to show you how to do the half hexagons in this video. If you're looking for information on how I actually made the blanket, the um, hexagons and the hexagon flowers, that will be in part one and two of the tutorial and I'll link those below for you. But for today let's talk about the half hexagons. So I have some yarn here. I'll put the information about the yarn I'm using again in the drop box below. And just make a slip stitch to start. And we're going to make a loop by making four chains. I'll be using UK terms in this video, but I'll also mention the US terms frequently. And I'll put the translation up on the screen for you. So there's my four chains, and I'm just going to make a slip stitch into that beginning chain to make a little loop. Okay, it's hard to see the hole in the middle, but it is there. And then I'm going to make three chains and that's going to count as our first UK treble. So that'll be a US double. And then I'll make two more UK trebles into that centre loop. So that's one side of our little mini hexagon. I'm then going to do two chains for the corner and then two trebles for the next side. So that's US doubles, two US doubles. So that's two sides, another two chains for the corner, and then I will finish on three UK trebles. So three US doubles. And that's our first round. And then I will just pull on this starting yarn a little bit, just to pull that center up so it's not too big. So now we're going to start the second round. I'm going to do three chains to act as our first treble. And I'm just going to turn over and we'll work from the back. So the first stitch is going to be made into the same place as the chain, so this beginning stitch. So whereas normally you'd work into the, this would count as your first stitch and you'd work into the next stitch along, we want to make an increase. So I'm going to work into the same place. So I'm going to make another treble stitch there. And then I will just work into each treble along. So one into the next and another treble into the last. So that counts as four trebles along that side and then I'm going to work into the corner. So this is the same as we did for the full hexagons back in the first tutorial. So it'd be one treble or US double, two chains and, and one more treble. So on this side we've got a total of five treble stitches when we include that starting chain. So now I'm going to do a treble into each stitch below. So that's a US double into each stitch below. And the corner worked in exactly the same way. So one UK treble, two chains, and another UK treble all worked into that corner space. Then to finish, a treble into each stitch. So a US double into each of these stitches. So one, two, and then we need to work into this starting chain. 
to finish the side. So we need to do two stitches into that. So two treble stitches. So I'll just work into that chain. There we are. So I'll make one stitch, two stitches. And there we have it. So I've got five stitches on this side, a corner space, four stitches, a corner space, and then ending on five again. So once you have your hexagon, you can then join that onto the whole hexagons in exactly the same way as I showed you in the previous tutorial. So we just, I make one chain, I turn the work, and then I can join to a whole hexagon. So I'll work into this first stitch and this counts as our space on a whole hexagon. So the corners match up. We've got four stitches to match to our four stitches along here. So this extra stitch is used to work into the space. So I've gone into the first stitch on my half hexagon. If I go into the space on my full hexagon, I pull through and just make a double crochet, a UK double crochet, US single. And then I can just work along the entire row of stitches to join them together exactly as you've been doing so far for the whole hexagons. So I've worked into each stitch and then I work into the corner chain of each to finish. And then we have a join on one side. When it comes to making the hexagon flowers, I like to make the half hexagon first and then I can just make the whole hexagons and join each one on as I make them. And that gives me the little half flowers that I use down the side. Then for, along the edges for these ones here, filling in the little halves on the edge, you just got a little three sided gap that they will just sit into and you can just join around from the back. So the only place where that's different is on the corners. So on two of the corners, you will have your half hexagon and you'll be able to just join it on the two sides to make the edge and the yarn will be in the in the right place to make the join. But on the opposite two corners, you will have your half hexagon, but your yarn will be up here in the wrong place. So if in those cases, if you just turn to the back, you can make a slip stitch into each stitch along until you just get to the corner space. That will leave your yarn here at the bottom of this corner, and then you'll be ready to join on the other two sides. That's would look like that. So I would very much recommend that you end your blanket corners with a half hexagon in all cases, because it's much easier then to fill in these little hexagon dips and get a nice neat square edge for each side of the blanket. And I'll show you how to fill in those next. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. I hope it's been useful and I'll see you next time. Bye.